we thought that with that uh, number of questions, we could potentially write a book. Hi and welcome. So today we're pleased to have uh, Dr. Esteban Chinching and uh, Dr. Chinching did his medical school at uh, Costa Rica and then he moved into United States where he did internal medicine residency at uh, Albert Einstein in New York. And then he moved to Cleveland Clinic where he did his neurology residency, stroke neurology and intervention neurology all at the Cleveland Clinic. And then he uh, moved afterwards as a faculty at the Wright University in Dayton, Ohio. Dr. Changing is very well published and he is the author of the Neuro Neurology Board uh, Book Review, which is our favorite go-to book for a Neurology Board Exam. So welcome Dr. Changing and thanks for joining us. Hi Omar, um, thanks for having me. Thanks for this opportunity to talk about uh, the book and about uh, the board uh, review. You're so you're so welcome. So first of all, can you tell me why did you author this wonderful book? What made you kind of think about getting us this book online? Yeah. So um, basically, at the beginning, when I was in the third year uh, of my neurology residency, uh, me and my uh, a co resident Lama Chahin, who would be eventually uh, my uh, co-author, one of my co-authors in the book, um, we're in charge of uh, board review. Uh, sessions for the residents. So we started using the available uh, uh, banks of questions that were there, which included basically questions with just single answers without explanation. So we, we started building explanations to those questions as we presented them for the residents to, to learn. And uh, then we started noticing that uh, what was most useful and, and important for the resident was the those uh, questions in which there was a clinical vignette. And um, seeing that we had uh, seen similar cases in the hospital and the clinics, instead of using those questions that were available, we started building our own questions with different details and providing explanations to that. As we ended up the third year um, of residency, we noted that we had a big uh, bank of questions. And um, we thought that with that uh, number of questions, we could potentially write a book we looked into available sources and there was no good um, question book available with uh, answers and with clinical vignettes. So we saw that there was a niche for, for this book and we approached uh, one of our attendings who had a lot of experience publishing, Dr. Alex Ray Grant. And uh, he was excited about the opportunity and about the, the, uh, the project and uh, decided to put us in contact and come along with us into this project of writing the book. Definitely. I, I really enjoyed when I when I did my uh, neurology board exam and I went through the book, it was uh, asking questions like will highlight the information, makes it more relevant and more interesting and, and uh, highlight the need for to you to, to know this information. And it kind of makes the study more seamless and uh, flow. And definitely it will be very helpful to have uh, an, uh, a whole list of, of images and, and cases that, that when you sit down and do that uh, uh, book, you, you will find all the resources. And how about uh, the, the other format of uh, in incorporating all the, we have lots of pictures of like images, uh, neurophysiological testing, and, and how did you kind of stimulate our memory to have all of those images available for us? So um, I think I think that neurology is a beautiful specialty in which there's so much uh, information that you have to gather to come up with a diagnosis or management plan or treatment plan. And, and, and every little piece of information is important from the history, from the clinical exam, to imaging, um, either a CT, an MRI, or a CT or an angiogram, or a neurophysiological study. So each um, case, depending on uh, what it is, requires you to collect that information and process it to come up with an answer, to come up with a diagnosis or a treatment. And I think that in, in this book, you can see that, that um, you have to use all different pieces of information to come up with, with, uh, with your answer. And that is significantly helpful because it mimics what you do in clinical practice and also is something that helps you um, learn as opposed to just memorize uh, uh, bullet points or memorize words or phrases here and there. That's very true. Definitely will put things into context. And uh, so this book was uh, authored uh, back in, the, in about like 2017. 
And uh, so how would you uh, advise us to stay up to date on the latest and greatest information? Because every day there is a new anti-CGRP for migraine or there is a new anti-epileptic drugs or anti-MS drugs. So what's the advice to stay up to date on those information? Yeah, unfortunately, books are somewhat static. And uh, a board review book, what we try to do is uh, do as much as of, a, of the classical type neurology um, education that you have to learn. But uh, when it comes to uh, developments and evolution, I mean, neurology has, has evolved so rapidly in the past few years from, as you said, new medicines to new evidence and new treatments. Um, I do uh, endovascular treatment for stroke and that has changed dramatically in the past uh, four or five years. So unfortunately, the book doesn't address that. Um, but that's something that you, during your practice and during your learning process as a resident or student, should uh, go to either key landmark studies or keep yourself updated with uh, reading articles and, and, and journals and, and abstracts. Um, but the, the book provides a significant uh, amount of information uh, that is useful for learning clinical neurology and learning the classics of neurology, at least from from the practical perspective. But again, it doesn't um, provide that uh, up-to-date uh, new evidence that comes up every week, basically. That's right, like every day. I mean, you're an interventional neurologist and, and every, every day there's a new study that extends the, the TPA window or the intervention or a new device that comes out. But definitely, I mean, we can apply the 80-20 rules, which means that 80% of the results will come from 20% of the efforts that we, we put in. And, and your book and, and those neurology review books, they have the core knowledge of neurology. And then all the new updates and, and additions, they will be kind of adding the cherry on the, on the spot. I really love the continuum. A neurology that updates uh, us every every once you know uh, every uh, quarter. Then also the the up to date. So you know, I always advise my residents uh, to stay up to date by reading those articles and and staying up to date with that. So uh, talking about updating the information, are you thinking of a third edition for this book? So we have the second edition now. So are you planning on that? Uh, me and my co-authors, and, and first I have to thank uh, and. Uh, Thank my co-authors who have uh, worked in this project tirelessly from the beginning. Um, we talked about it um, actually at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, and and um, afterwards the pandemic hit and uh, we put everything on uh, on hold. Um, and at the same time, um, it, it, it's uh, everybody has different types of um, schedules and and projects that have made this board review book be on hold is still um, in conversations, but we don't have any um, immediate plans to do a third edition at this time. Wow, I mean, I did interview multiple book authors on this channel and definitely were hearing the same answer that the pandemic did hold a lot of uh, progression and, and updates for those books because uh, you know things are, are different the the flow of the book editing and and getting the second the third edition is really like uh, limited by that but hopefully as things go back to normalcy so hopefully we'll be seeing the third edition sometime soon in the future and uh, so talking about like sitting for the exam, so what advice do you have for our trainees and the people who are sitting for the exam, either for initial accreditation or for the uh, maintenance of certification? Yeah, so I think that th definitely there's many ways to learn. And one of the ways is like linear learning based on, on a book that you can start from the beginning to the end and go gradually in progress. And that's one way of learning not only uh, using this book, but using other resources, you should always go to use multiple resources at the same time. Textbooks Continuum, as you mentioned, is a great source of information and resource for learning. The other option that you could do is um, also do the, the, the questions in the book in a random fashion. So mm -hmm. depending on what topic you're interested in, either doing the questions first and waiting until the end to review your answers, or reading the question, then going to the answer. And every learner has a different method of um, learning, so you have to find out what's the best way. But I always recommend using a two-way method in which you do a structured way from beginning to end. And at the same time, the, the other option will be more like an unstructured, in which you start with a question, go to the answer, and then the answer takes you to another question. 
And then all, that other question takes you to another one. So for example, if you're reading about a stroke and you end up seeing a mitochondrial related stroke, then you there's the answer takes you to mitochondrial uh, myopathies and you start reading about myopathies and then, then it takes you to mitochondrial disorders in which you have epilepsy or seizures. And, and that way you get into the rabbit hole, which is an uncommon and a typical way of learning, but is a, a different way of reinforcing information. Because when you learn one thing one way, sometimes you can only retrieve it the same way, but if you learn it in different pathways, it, it makes it um, accessible in different ways and, and uh, it supports the learning experience. That's really, really important uh, points. And, and I really like uh, those points uh, in learning. And I think that uh, one of the major advantages for the book is that uh, that we discuss, we did not discuss here is the uh, application. The, you have a website and phone application in Inkling and you can access the book anywhere uh, online. And you can choose to do the book uh, questions and you can shuffle them and, and move them around and do them. So this is really important because, you know, sometimes you have like a, a 10 minutes or 15 minutes break between patients or like at night call. And then you just want to just open the book and, and read something useful. And that is like really it comes handy when you have the application and the online version of that. I think that everybody should try to take advantage of us many um, different ways of learning uh, available, not only from the book, but uh, from other sources. So you can reinforce things different way, as I said, in a different method, not only in one way. Right, and and studying early for the boards, instead of cramming like the last two weeks in, in August before the before you sit for the exam, I advise my, my uh, residents and uh, fellows to start studying early, like in the second, third, fourth year, so that every time you sit for the right exam, you force yourself to study and use this book to study and then by the time you sit for the board you went through the book like multiple times hopefully and then you strengthen your knowledge and it will be kind of review for you yeah my residents are, are well they should get it uh, as soon as they start the neurology in second year um, but yeah i mean studying early is important and, and, and neurology learning in neurology is a long-term process it's not something that you can learn overnight so just keep yourself not only with the book but with textbooks um throughout from the beginning of your residency and throughout your your uh, residency uh, uh, training and throughout your career, basically. Definitely, and definitely enjoy the, the, the way and enjoy the journey through that. And uh, so thank you so much, Dr. Chen-Ching. It was a pleasure to talk to you and sharing your experience. And to you out there, for more information and about the board exam and other exclusive interviews with the authors, please see those uh, playlists and see you in the next one. Thank you so much.